Hi everyone, I'm Mark Woods from Bible Society and I'm here with three colleagues. Uh, we have Dr. Rhiannon McAleer, who is Bible Society's Head of Research. We have a member of her team, Dr. Rob Barwood-Simmons, and we have uh, Sean Rees, who is Head of Bible Society's work in Wales. And we're here because we want to talk about the results of the recent census, uh, which have just been released. Uh, uh, and we're going to talk about the religion results. And uh, I'm going to begin by asking Rhiannon, can you just tell us what the census said and perhaps what it did not say? Oh, yeah. Thank you, Mark. Um, so big headline news um, from the census this week, which was that as expected, we saw a decline in those identifying as Christians, and that is now about 46% of the population, and a rise in those saying they have no religion, which has gone up to about 37%. So to put some numbers around that, the 46% is about 27.5 million people saying they're Christian, um, and those with no religion, it's about 22.2 uh, million. So still more Christians, um, or people identifying as Christian, um, than those without religion. But the story here is that that is a shift. So 10 years ago, there were more people identifying as Christian and less people identifying with, with no religion. The really interesting thing about the census though, like all research all surveys, is you uh, get the results to the question you ask. And this um, question isn't asking about religious practice. It's mm. not asking how often does someone go to mm. church. It's not asking what they believe. Mm. So while someone's told us that they're Christian or that they don't have religion, we don't know what's under that. We don't know what they think being a Christian means mm. or having no religion. What do they think that means? Mm. So for researchers, it's really interesting that we see mm. that shift in identity but it leaves us a lot of questions to answer mm. about why did you tick that box or why did you not tick a box. And what is the question that was asked? What did they answer? Uh, the question is a very straight question. It's uh, what is your religion? Yeah. Um, and that is an interesting question because it implies that someone has religion mm. um, to answer. So mm. historically, the census has given perhaps slightly higher affiliation than religion than what we see in other, quest in other questions that are asked in other surveys. Mm. For example, the British Social Attitudes Survey, which is a much more open question, more along the lines of, if you have one, what is your religion? Um, and so and that, that, comes that, out as, that comes out as a lower figure. It does come out as a yeah. lower figure, quite a yeah. lot lower. And so okay. for those of us who spend our time asking people <laughs> what is their religion, <laughs> these, these figures really aren't a surprise. And it's just mm. interesting to see the census come mm. in line with a trend that we've been observing mm. for, for many years, um, yeah. it has to be said, but we really need to hold it in context that while there is a shift, there, there is a decline in Christian identity, in absolute terms, this is still many millions of people who, who yeah. aren't going to church regularly, but who still identify as Christian. And can you imagine if 27.5 million people voted for one political party, mm. for mm. example, it, it would be headline mm. news for yeah. days and days and days. So yeah. it, we have to hold the trend, but we also have to hold the absolute numbers um, as well and mm. hold them in yeah. context of each other. Yeah. So Rob, I mean, just, I wonder if you'd like to expand on that uh, a, a little bit, because, um, you know, there's a question about whether there are fewer church going Christians mm. or just fewer people identifying as Christians. And there is a difference. And, you know, as Rihanna was saying, um, you've really got to tease out the meaning behind these figures. Yeah, absolutely. So um, uh, as Rihanna was saying, we've, we've kind of had these uh, snapshots of, of census data um, since uh, 2001 was the first time it was asked and then 2011 and uh, and and last March um, being the last time it was it was asked, obviously, and these massive figures that we've we've known since two thousand one, we've known since before then that this is far far higher than mm. um, than church attendance or other metrics that might measure um, kind of religious practice and religious adherence, um, and uh, this these kind of figures therefore feed into a. A worry, a panic that this is some kind of overall uh, mm. um, massive decline in kind of Christian faith or Christian belief, as though we have seen uh, many millions of deconversions over the past twenty years. When actually, mm. as Rhiannon was saying, it's much more complex than that um, on a few different levels. Um, uh, and I guess to start with that church-going question, mm. 
uh, what we've seen over the last few years um, is that although church going is, is actually quite difficult to measure and quite difficult to track um, in part because we have certain denominations often the the kind of historic large established denominations are quite good at um, keeping track of mm. of attendance metrics um, they are not the whole story and so we then see vast swathes of of the church where we know or suspect that growth is happening where we're not getting that data in the same way so we rely on other forms of data for example some data that mm. that we've been collecting where we ask people um, uh, how often outside of weddings and baptisms do you attend mm. church and what we've found is that in the past uh, four and a half nearly five years now since 2018 um, that number of churchgoers mm monthly but also weekly has been more or less stable at I think um, 7% weekly and 10% monthly. I mean that's really interesting isn't it because mm. the the overall narrative that you, you pick up just in, in general sort of conversation in the media and what have you is that the church is declining that fewer and fewer, fewer and fewer people are going to church and that it's only a matter of time before we are yeah. actually extinct but but you're saying that 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 the figures that we've got don't show that at all. Yeah, and and again, you've got that complexity, right? Yeah. Because um, I think the historic denominations are often struggling, and mm. often that that exhibits itself in um, attendance figures. But the knock-on effect um, of of attendance with giving in other areas means you also get other markers of that of churches mm. having to be closed or resources um, being pulled back or whatever. So that narrative builds. Uh, but as I say, um, that's not the whole church. That's yeah. not the whole picture. Yeah. And there is vibrancy um, going on in other, in other uh, across different places, in the historic denominations, yeah. of course, yeah. but also particularly in um, new denominations, in non-denominational churches, um, in uh, perhaps in historic denominations that don't have much of a grounding in, mm. in the UK, but are beginning to emerge as a result of migration in particular. Mm. So that uh, is a very important thing to, to hold on to, to bear in mind, is that this decline that we see in the census is is one important metric of decline and mm. it, of, of, of where we're at as a mm. as Christian um, community. But that's not a pattern that's shared in every mm. other metric. Mm. Um, and so we can talk a bit more about what might be going on there, but it is yeah. it is not the same phenomena as we might see elsewhere. That's really interesting, isn't it? And and that just makes me think how important it is to to tell the counter narrative because otherwise mm. it just becomes a self fulfilling prophecy. You know, if people think that the church is inexorably declining, then that's that's the kind of idea that they've got in their mind mm. and, and that, you know, it does it does become a self fulfilling prophecy. Mm. Now, Sean, just turning to you for a moment, you are somebody with vast experience of church life. Um, and we were talking a bit before um, this recording. And um, in lots of ways, that's not what you're seeing on the ground, is it? You're not seeing re um, uh, that decline on the ground. Certainly not. So let me just um, give you the facts. The facts are that Wales is at a deeper, a greater decrease in people reporting their religion as Christian. In fact, there's been a 14% a decrease from 57.6% in 2011 to 43.6% in 2021. And I think a lot of people on the ground would find that surprising, hmm. but not alarming. Um, what we are experiencing in Wales is that the church is becoming more missional and more active, but actually the amount of people who um, would consider them to be self of the Christian religion is in, dec in decline. However, the church is at the forefront of societal transformation in Wales. Um, you can find Christian leaders in almost every sphere of influence, which is something that we've not had mm. um, in previous decades. We have um, people serving the poor. We have multiple, multiple food banks, clothing banks. You know, the pandemic really mm. um, charged us to action, really. And so... I don't find this to be alarmist. I find it disappointing, of course. We would want um, everybody to have 
faith in the Lord Jesus and therefore describe themselves as a Christian. But what I see is a church which is being mobilised for mission and there's a greater openness to the mm. gospel than I've seen in my lifetime, certainly. Mm. Mm. That's that's really interesting, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I wonder if um, if I could go back to, to one of you, maybe Rh- Rhiannon. Um, uh, could you just expand a little bit on um, if people aren't describing themselves as Christians, what is what is going on in their minds? I mean, what is it that they think that they are not? Mm. To put it that way, mm. Mm. Yes. does that make sense? And that I think kind of makes sense. there would be many millions of answers yeah. to <laughs> yeah. that. Um, yeah, and um, you know, we we can't. We can only speak in, in broad trends and I think for mm. the church it's really important that we bear in mind that mm. we need to have conversations with people you know mm. one-on-one and understand where, where they're coming from and that's a big part yeah. of Bible Society research program is to mm. identify you know broad trends that kind of cut up the big picture um, mm. a little bit so we can start having those individual conversations. Mm. In terms of that um, I'm not willing to put a Christian label on myself. That mm. that is a big shift. We've gone from this is I'm British. This is my my default part of being British is being Christian yeah. to something that I think people are saying. I I understand that religion means something. Mm. I understand that being Christian means something. I wouldn't claim to you know be a Hindu, so yeah. I'm not going to claim to be a Christian. Yeah. And they see it as something that you opt into yeah. and I think there are many in the church who would probably see that as positive mm-hmm. you know they understand that mm-hmm. being a Christian isn't a label it, it's um, mm-hmm. a belief it's an act and you know it, it, it's um, participating in something really quite mm-hmm. deep mm-hmm. the flip side of that is no religion and we can't assume that people who say they have no religion are atheist mm-hmm. And um, our own data um, from a huge, huge um, research project shows that about um, 10, 11 percent of people who say they have no religion say there is definitely or probably a God. Mm. Mm. So, you know, they're they're absolutely not fitting an atheist. (laughs) Equally of that no religion group, 17 percent are saying they don't know. And that, that's an interesting uh, box to tick when you're talking Isn't about it? God. I don't know. Is that because I'm an agnostic or is <laughs> yeah. that because that is a big question and, yeah. and I don't know. Um, equally, other organisations such as Theos have recently done research into this, which have demonstrated that there's tremendous breadth of beliefs and um, worldviews in that no religion box. Mm. So we really mustn't fall into the trap of um, assuming that just because someone ticked one box, we know what they think. Mm. And it is on us as researchers mm. and mission mm. practitioners to understand that there are subgroups and complexities mm. and mm. let's get to know them better, you know, mm. for the people who are ticking Christian but not coming to church what is it about Christianity that you want to hold on to Mm. is it that you were baptized is it that you were christened is it that you go to church at Christmas and there's something that tingles in you when you hear a carol Mm. and that's important you know let's Mm. use that as a place to build Um, equally for those who are no religion let's talk about that what well what do you what do you think is going on in the world and and finding that that common ground but it's always been the case that there are people who are active practitioners of Christianity as a smaller group than those who say that they're mm. Christian. Mm. And in many ways, what we're just seeing is a, a bit more openness mm. um, on, on that trend. Mm. And yeah, we should yeah. be open to understanding that further, mm. in my opinion. Equally, our, our data suggests um, spiritual openness, you know, Shan, that there isn't necessarily the same shifts in mm. fundamental belief in God or a higher power. So um, we've undertaken two big surveys, one in 2018 and one in 2022, both with YouGov, highly respected um, research agency. Same survey, same conditions. So really, you know, good, robust ways of um, looking at social trend over four and a half years. Between those two polls, bearing in mind the pandemic, Mm -hmm. belief in God stayed stable. Um, Equally, those Mm. saying there definitely or probably isn't a God Mm. have declined. Now, they haven't gone into that they're saying they do believe in God. Mm. They've gone into I don't know. Mm. So that's really interesting. Has the pandemic made most of us, you know, question Mm. what's actually going 
on you know and, yeah. and that place of uncertainty is a place to begin a conversation mm -hmm. um yeah <laughs> that's that's fascinating thank you um sean i just wondered how you responded to that from the perspective of a mission practitioner because what rhiannon seemed to be describing was a level of openness which we don't always um uh, you know we don't always get actually um, yeah, I'd absolutely agree. So one of our largest sort of yeah. network of churches is New Wine Cymru and they are a multi-denominational network. It's not a denomination, it's a, um, a grouping of, of people who are missional, who love God, who want to see um, transformation, spiritual mm -hmm. transformation in Wales. And they would say quite openly that we have never had it so good in Wales in terms of can I tell you about my faith? You know, what do you think about this? Oh, tell me, you know, you could be sat in a coffee shop or elsewhere and have a very open conversation about God, about Jesus, and uh, be widely accepted without any issue at all. And, you know, there are church planting networks um, at work in Wales, and we are seeing new um, churches being birthed. And I find that incredibly exciting that millennials, particularly across Wales, are saying, right, you know, maybe this data is showing us we need to do some things differently. And therefore, really taking up the mantle and saying, right, you know, I'm going to invest in this church, in, in this town or village that perhaps doesn't have a Christian witness, mm -hmm. go somewhere where there is literally no church or chapel, and I'm going to plant here and I'm going to make this my life's mission mm -hmm. to see um, God move in power you know we are the nation who have at least 17 recorded revivals mm. in our um, nation and that is incredibly important for us you know we have um, chapels and churches on every street mm. watch the rugby and you'll still hear a catalogue of hymns you know it's <laughs> deeply ingrained inside yes. of us yes. and so you know this this data today it just doesn't um, correlate to what we're seeing on the ground. I'm seeing an increase in the gospel. I'm seeing an openness to being prayed for in terms of healing. So um, one of the New Wine Cymru leaders, Chloe Swart, has just submitted and achieved a PhD. Um, she's basically collected hundreds of um, testimonies of people being prayed for and mm. having miraculous healings and it's been passed by a secular mm. university mm. so god is at work and god is moving in our nation and so perhaps yes we do need to just shout a little bit louder about this kind of mm. counter narrative that the the media would want us to believe mm. certainly mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm guessing, actually, I mean, you uh, refer to 17 different v revivals. Uh, I didn't know about the 17, actually, but, um, yeah, but I'm guessing that each time there's a revival, the church comes out slightly different. And I, I guess, yes. you know, the church of today, the growing, living, vital church of today is not going to look necessarily like the church of 20, 30 years ago. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, methodology changes, doesn't it? Practice mm. changes. Mm. Um, you know, we are the British and Foreign Bible Society, we were birthed out of Wales and out of the mm. story of Mary Jones, of course. One of the things that really um, saddens me is that, you know, when God has moved in such power in Wales that we haven't established mm. learning communities, Bible colleges on a scale that perhaps mm. would enable us to see a lasting effect on society. And, you know, perhaps that's um, something for us to look at in the coming mm. decades. You know, how are we? Um, engaging with the Bible as a nation, how are we facilitating that to happen mm. for not just people who already love God and love mm. the Bible, but for people um, who might find it to be totally alien? You know, mm. if this is good news, it's good news for everyone. Mm. <laughs> so, how can we get that message across? Mm. 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 Yeah. Can I can I, I pick up that note of um, of optimism, um, and that's. That's right. I mean, you know, Christians do optimism just by, <laughs> by default, really, don't we? It's, uh, it's, it's kind of what we do. Um, but at the same time, I think uh, we just have to register the fact that um, mm. there, there is a change going on, isn't there? there? Is, and yeah. that if fewer people are identifying as Christians, um, that has implications, which I guess we will have to, to work out and which society is, is going to have to, 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 to work out. Um, and it's hard to say exactly what those implications might be um, just uh, just at the moment. Um, but Rob, I wonder if I could pick up with you something that, that you and I were talking about yesterday. Um, 
about labels mm. and people being given labels to describe their position, uh, which maybe they wouldn't have had yeah. 50 or 100 years ago, mm. or 200 years ago sure. or whatever. So I, as a non-statistician, statistician, you know, somebody who's practically enumerate. Um, <laughs> uh, no, honestly, I really am. Um, so I'm just thinking, is it possible to say over the over a period of say two or three hundred years for instance is it possible to say how much of a change there has really been in terms of people's sort of heart attitudes mm. towards faith and the bible um, i am a, a keen student of history and i can think of times in the past when there have been you know well i mean gk chesterton uh, said didn't he at least five times in history the faith has gone to the dogs and in each case it was the dog that died um so uh, I, i'm just wondering how much new there is mm. here really yeah so certainly it's not possible or, or feasible to to quantify that over the course of of um that kind of length of time um we have some metrics that you might want might be able to look back on in terms of church attendance, mm. perhaps. But but even there, you've got very different contexts of what draws people to a church. Why are they mm. um, attending there, and 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 the consistency of data collection across that time. But even then, we know full well that's not quite um, what you were, what you were getting at there. Mm. Um, and so when we're looking at what is going on in people's hearts and minds and how they identify themselves, what they cling to, um, you've, got, uh, you've got a few parallel shifts happening or, or contexts, I guess, to be given. One is um, around, uh, I guess, kind of, philosophical worldviews mm. that do flux and shift over time and sometimes we see um, kind of radical uh, triggers for this in maybe in kind of um, the Renaissance or Reformation kind mm. of period but even then that takes a while to to dribble down to the the um, the wider population but it does eventually get there and, and you get these shifts that do alter how people see the world how people see themselves within the world how they um, perceive their sense of self and what it means to um, to be uh, an individual in society mm. to relate to one another and to the transcendent mm. um, but we do see this desire to relate to something transcendent throughout history so so those things do shift so so then where people put themselves within that there are those shifts mm. the other key thing is um, the the labels that we use and what we feel comfortable adopting and what is um, understood by different labels and and how common these are and I think that is a big aspect of what's happened over the past um, well 20 years since 2001 and mm. and certainly prior to that as well if we had similar data and, and things like the British Social Attitude Survey goes back to 1980 and shows mm. similar kind of trends and that works in two dimensions, which Rhiannon referred to a little bit earlier on. And one is the shift in what we understand by the Christian label, yeah. um, the Christian identity, wherein it's a seemingly a shift away from Christian by default and towards this perception that being Christian means something. Mm. It matters. It, it is a. It is not something you hold lightly. It's something that that um, that really is kind of. Uh, something that is deep within you and so then that shifts away from being the default position mm. um, but alongside that you get a shift of um, kind of the normalization of non-religion mm. um, and what's key there is that the label as Rana said isn't atheist because that is a label itself which I think a lot of non-religious people who might um, kind of uh, philosophically tick the boxes that would align them with atheism would feel slightly uncomfortable because mm. of the baggage that's come along with that label mm. because all labels carry cultural significance as well as kind of dictionary definitions mm. and non-religious has become a label that people feel more and more comfortable associating with mm. 
not least because it is non-institutional. Mm. So if you identify with non-religion, you can have the kind of spiritual beliefs that Rhiannon um, talked about. You can be unsure about everything. You can have no belief whatsoever. You can be utterly apathetic to it. Mm. And what it allows you to do is just not not either adopt a, a an identity that you think I'm uncomfortable with that because it, it's it refers to a level of commitment mm. or thing that I, that I don't share in the same way as Ren said. You know, mm. I would feel uncomfortable identifying as Hindu mm. for all sorts of reasons. Um, but also, it it means you are you're kind of it's a deinstitutionalized, decommunalized label that people might feel more kind of comfortable mm. because it's currently not got too much baggage around it. Mm. Mm. So. As I was saying earlier, what you haven't seen is massive, I don't think, necessarily like fundamental belief change, but you've seen a shift in cultural attitudes to what it means to be a Christian, what it means to be non-religious in particular, um, which is fascinating sociologically. Yes. But kind of regardless, Mm. in amongst all those shifts, you still have, Mm. as we said earlier, 27.5 Twenty-seven and a half million people mm. saying this Christian label, yeah. and it was an optional question. Seven percent of people didn't respond to the question, um, and they didn't have to. And so, something meant that twenty-seven and a half million people went that that one. Mm. That describes that me. describes mm. me. It yeah. describes my household, yeah. which is. Yeah, fascinating in its own way about what that means to those people. But yeah. but yes, that would be what I would say is the fundamental shift. And I would say that historically, it's very difficult yeah. to pinpoint. Um, you know, oh, 1850. Yeah. If we did this census, then it probably would have looked mm. like that. It's so difficult to say because yeah. there's so many different yeah. contexts that are going around there. Yeah. But I yeah. I don't see a kind of crippling decline in that in that way yeah. because. As you say, it's there's always been that flux yeah. in the air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Fascinating. Thank you. Um, this is just such a huge subject, isn't mm. it? And um, you know, we could carry on talking about it for hours, but I think we should probably move to a conclusion. So, what I'm going to do is something I should probably have warned you about, and just ask each of you in turn for a, a sort of, you know. A brief takeaway, really, from this um, uh, from this uh, census, from these figures, um, just uh, something that we can take with us and think about, really. And Sean, I'm going to start with you. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would say, church, yeah. it's time to get back on our knees yeah. and um, time to really pray. It's time to step up to the mark and um, to ensure that we really are. Um, at working the Great Commission, that you know we are going and making disciples from every nation, teaching them to obey everything that Jesus has taught us. You know, it's a time to go back to basics, to underpin all of our activity with prayer, and just to go for it once again. Let's not be discouraged. Um, God is on the move, and so um, let's pray. Um, Let's just pray that that God would um, move in power once again, not just in Wales, but across the whole of the United Kingdom. Mm. Thank you, Shah. Rhiannon? I would say my takeaway and my encouragement Mm -hmm. to people is to ask what is under the label Mm -hmm. and to not assume we know what the label means Mm -hmm. for every individual person. Mm. And my second one, which I'm going to sneak <laughs> in there. You can have to. I'm going to sneak yeah. it in there. Yeah. Is this question is about how individuals feel. Yeah. And there will be claims that this means we are now a secular country. Mm. Yeah. That is not a straight correlation and yeah. it is not a straight conclusion. Yeah. Because how people feel about the role of Christianity in society mm. at a national level, its role in things like the Queen's funeral, mm. the upcoming coronation, that is different. Yeah. And it may well be that we will find, as we do more research, that while people don't feel comfortable holding that label for them as individuals, that they feel a lot less comfortable about shrugging off Britain as a Christian country. That question is open, and we will continue to try and answer Mm. it. Fascinating. Thank you. And Rob? Um, I think I'm going to piggyback on what Rhiannon said there, uh, just close it there, because 
some people will will want to say, and I have seen say that this this shows that Britain is a secular country, mm. and it it just quite clearly doesn't show that. Um, not only that no religion is is only thirty seven percent of the population, but um, you know comfortably over half of the population mm. do actively choose to um, align with a, a religious identity. And that is essential for us as a society to recognise, and that means all sorts of things mm. um, uh, across. You know how how do we improve um, religious education? How do we w- take that forward from there? And um, how do we what is it, understand, um, as you say, what these labels and identities mm. mean to individuals? What does a Christian identity mean? What mm. does no religion mean how can we um, better uh, understand that because it is clear that Britain remains a religious country um, for the time being in some form mm. and then the the second thing I would say because <laughs> I'm gonna Go I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I, ha- I just have to follow where yes, Rihanna leads yes, yes. Um, yeah. is a, is that this as we say this isn't a an inexorable decline in Christian belief or practice. This is, if anything, uh, an awareness, a growing awareness that being a Christian means something mm. yeah. and is a significant thing mm. for people to to um, to identify with. It is not a label to to tick once mm. every ten years, and that seems to be yeah. coming through. And that's a fantastic note to, uh, note to end on, I think. So thank you, Rob. Thank you, Rhiannon. And thank you, Sean. That's great. Thank you. What's thank your you, takeaway, Mark? Oh, yes. <laughs> My takeaway. Um, well, uh, yeah, good question. Um, I, I come back to the history, to be honest, because um, as, as I said, I can think of plenty of times in the history of the church where things have been at a very, very low ebb in terms of uh, the look of the church or the feel of the church. Uh, and the church always comes back, you know, um, it, it is a living organisation and it changes and it grows. And um, the church of 50 years time, I suspect, probably won't look a lot like the church of today. Mm. And that's fine. Mm. So um, I'm I'm comfortable. I'm interested <laughs> in the data. That's, uh, you know, that that's all fine. Uh, does it make me depressed? No, not at all. Is that OK? Brilliant. Fine. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.